and allowing us to see another morning. Thank you, Jesus. Every new morning is God's way of saying one more time, a second chance that he has given us for righteous living. We praise him for his daily mercy and grace as we feel his gentle touch on our hearts today. So let's give God the honor and the glory and thank him for all he has done, all he's doing, and all he's going to do for our lives. Given honor and admiration and appreciation to our presiding bishop, S. Janine Hyman, our bishop Destiny, Jeanette Williams White, and our pastors, Mark and Valerie White, and the entire Zion family, we thank you for joining us on this Sunday morning service, May 15, 2022. We are thrilled that you have taken time to hear another holy word from the Lord. We give thanks to our Father for looking beyond our faults and loving us unconditionally. Zion Worship Center Ministries is physically located at 2131 Pine Street in Wyandotte, Michigan. Telephone number 734-899-7078. You can locate us throughout the week on most social media platforms, starting the week off with six p.m. prayer every Tuesday with Minister Robin White on Zion Conference Live. You can call us throughout the week for prayer on Zion's telephone. Pastor Mark White giving words of insight and awareness with the Fisherman Faith every second and fourth Friday on Facebook Live, 7 p.m. Thursdays at 7 p.m. for Bible study on Zoom with Pastor Mark and myself with lively discussion of scripture and how it applies to our lives today. Word upon word, precept upon precept. Consider the matter with our Bishop Designee Jeanette Williams White whenever the Holy Spirit lay a matter on her heart that we as people need to be cognizant of as it impacts our daily lives. Sunday morning service, 10.45 a.m. on Zoom and 11 a.m. Facebook Live, where the infallible word of God is taught and preach. Our youth services with Pastor Valerie White immediately follows our 11 a.m. service. We invite you to join the youth as they learn life-changing stories of the Bible and political science studies, where they become aware of current events and how that impacts their lives as young adults. So join us in this wonderful learning venue where our children are rewarded financially for open discussion. So my thought for today is, the will of God will never take you where the grace of God will not protect you. So today's saint, our speaker is one that I, I always tell you does not need a formal introduction. So I'm not gonna give you one because you already know who she is as mom, pastor, bishop, attorney, teacher, friend, our sister. But I am compelled to tell you that she is a praying woman who seeks God in her daily walk with him. She's a woman of great faith and God rewards her for her faithfulness. I'm obligated to tell you how she seeks God daily as she intercedes for the saints and for those that are not so sanctified. She spends hours on the phone with our presider, adorning herself with more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding as uh, to saving souls for kingdom living and orchestrating a fellowship among leaders of the church. As an attorney, she fights for the righteous justice of her client and attempts to sway them to Jesus as to keep them from experiencing jail or prison time. With all of that, she still finds time to tell me what to do as a retired administrator. And through all of that, she is an awesome spiritual leader and teacher who has a genuine desire to transform lives and set minds on things above that offer eternal life. So saints, on this 15th day of May, 2022, I invite you to chill out, relax, Kick off your shoes, find a comfortable spot in a chair or a sofa, 
on the floor or wherever you are and prepare yourselves for an uplifting presence of the Lord. Ask him to reveal to you today the message and what meaning it has in your life and are to help you to incorporate the message in your heart, mind, and soul. I present to you my sister and our bishop designee, attorney Jeanette Williams-White. Let us all welcome her as she brings forth the blessed and faultless word of God. Now, our bishop designee. Oh. And Good afternoon. We're almost there. Still morning. But to all God's children uh, everywhere, everywhere, we bring you greetings uh, from Zion Worship Center. And to all of us that are on the Zoom uh, call, we are getting ready to go back to the building. But just know we're going to have Zoom uh, in the church, Facebook in the church. All of the media contacts will be there. So there no man shall be left behind. But we thank God for his grace and his mercy. I see some sons on here. I'm not going to call y'all names, but I see some sons today that my heart has been made glad. Some daughters that my heart has been made glad. I feel like it's Mother's Day. <laughs> but the Lord is good. To our presider, Bishop S.J. Hyman, to our pastors, Pastor Mark Bell White, to all of the elders, the ministers, the mothers of the church, we bring you get, uh, uh, greetings this morning and salute you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have been teaching on faith and I I, I haven't been released from it today. So here we go again. Here's another round. What I've learned in my studying and, and that I have uh, always uh, believed. I was a believer, uh, so I'm, I'm an easy one, an easy believer. I don't get many whippings because I'm too scared. But what I found out and has made a great impact in this study, uh, everything that we do is encapsulated in faith. And that's from Genesis to Revelations, everything. And faith is not something that you uh, receive the Lord Jesus Christ today and tomorrow you master it. It is something that you have to study uh, and, 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 and engulf yourself in it uh, throughout, uh, I believe, your walk with Jesus Christ, uh, your walk to the Father, in the Father, uh, in the Holy Spirit, uh, signs, wonders, it all comes by faith. And so we're going to touch on it uh, again on today. You can go to our YouTube channel. You can go to Jeanette Williams White. If you put in Zion Worship Center, it'll come up. Uh, Pastor Mark White is there. Many other ministers of the gospel. But this series is there. And we want you to go there because we can't give you everything uh, uh, in a day. Uh, so it is a walk. It is a process. Uh, so we thank you and we pray now for you, for your ears, that they will be open to receive the word of God. And in Jesus name, we pray. We're going to look today uh, at uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 16 and 17. And I'm also going to point you to Isaiah uh, chapter 52, verse 7, Romans chapter 11, 7 through 8. And even though I'm giving you these particular verses, there is a lot to study here. So don't just go to those uh, verses and, and skip over over all the rest, because it's all good, it's all juicy, uh, and uh, uh, it will give you more insight in your walk. So we walk by faith and not by sight. So if we look at Romans today, uh, chapter 10, verse um, 16 uh, and 17, it reads thus, it says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who have believed our report? So then faith cometh 
by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I need you to underline that. Faith come by hearing and it comes by hearing the word of God. And we sent you over to Isaiah where uh, in Isaiah, uh, the writer deals with this area in the fact of uh, the disobedience and the lack of uh, the children of Israel. Uh, and in the reading there, the children of Israel have been carried off to Babylon. And so there has been a great falling away uh, from the practices of their father. And they are not hearing from the prophet. Now, Paul states this. He says that, uh, the conditions that are necessary to call on Christ and be saved. One, that's what we're trying to get you to. Uh, there must be a preacher sent from God, number one. Number two, the proclamation of the message must come from God. There must be a hearing of the message. There also must be a believing of the message. So our title today is Just Listen. Just listen. Pat yourself on the chest and say, just listen. A lot of times we think we're listening, but we are not listening. The way that we can tell if you're listening is that we'll see the impact in your life. There is no way that you can receive the teachings of the word of God and it not make impact. Some would say, oh yes, I was listening. No, no, you may have heard, but you did not listen because the listening is going to carry a demonstration in the walk in your life. What Paul does here, he looks at the dullness of the hearing, the capacity of the children of Israel, Isaiah 52 and 7, which refers to those who bring the exiles, the good news of their imminent release from captivity in Babylon, and the gospel preachers who bring the good news of release from captivity of sin. So here in Isaiah, we're looking at the good news that is being brought uh, by the messengers from God that they are going to be released from Babylon. Uh, the 70 years has passed. It is so interesting that the 70 years has passed that God pronounced in the beginning of the captivity. And when it's time to be released, they are not interested in living, leaving Babylon. There are many who stayed in Babylon and did not return to Jerusalem. You find that very interesting. They found a life in Babylon that was conducive to their living and their lifestyles. We see that every day. People will not change from their walk of life because it is comfortable for them where they are. I feel my helper. Uh, 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 they'll stay in their mess, even though they have heard that Jesus Christ has come and he has a way out of sin and death, which has been pronounced since the beginning of time after the fall. Even though before time in eternity, uh, God speaks to his son in his coming into the earth at the appointed time. It didn't just start last night. It didn't just start with the writings of scripture, but we're looking back and looking into God and his desires 
for mankind. So we have preachers and their job is to show you, to point you in a way out of captivity. Sin is captivity. Sin holds you bound. And you say, well, I'm enjoying myself. Well, there is a place called hell. And according to our scripture, there is going to be a day of judgment and the pronouncement is going to happen whether you live eternally with God or you go to that place called hell. I believe it to be so. I believe the word of God. I want to point out to you, uh, just listen. You need to listen. You believe that you're listening, but you're not listening. Be not afraid, only believer, Mark says. Here he, he says, be not afraid, only believe. Here Mark uh, addresses the death of Jairus' daughter. And he says to the people, he says, don't be afraid. In other words, God got this. Don't be afraid, but believe the word of God. This is one of those marvelous truths of the scripture that is written to help us believe as we see the almightiness of God and also our privilege, not only to enter into his kingdom, but faith to become the partakers of his blessings while we are in the earth. Uh, uh, we are to be a, a blessed people to walk, to live healthy lives, uh, uh, to enjoy uh, in the earth as believers. Uh, everything that God has presented to us in the natural. It is not his will that we not prosper. It is not his will that we not be in good health. Faith cometh by hearing. By hearing. Simply listen. There is a hearing of faith. There is a hearing of faith. There is a hearing faith. Uh huh. We must believe what the scripture says and hold on to the word of God until it comes to pass. I don't care what it look like, what it sound like. When God gives us a word, it is yea and amen. I want you to consider this. The inner ear has fluid that is contained therein. This fluid moves at 25,000 nerve endings that the fluid calls to be moved in motion in your ear. There are nerve endings that transform vibrations into the electrical impulses that then travel along your auditory, your hearing nerve to the brain. The brain then interprets these signals. I say, God, we got a block going on in the church in the auditory system that is supposed to be going to the brain because we preach Sunday after Sunday, weekday prayer, and yet and still we have the disobedience of the saints and a lack of faith. I said, now we, we need you to work on our brains. Uh, we need to work on this ear of what we are taking in. What we take in spiritually, and what we take in naturally, what we take in spiritually all day long, what are you feeding in your ears? 
What are you feeding through television, through media sites? How are you living? What type of music is going on in your house? What type of television shows are going on in your house? Do you not understand that whatever you take in through these ears are set up in your body, in your soul, in your spirit? And then you wonder why a cuss word comes out of your mouth. Well, if you listen at some of these shows that they have on, every word or other word is so foul. The saints of God do not sit and listen. I hear you, God. Do not sit and listen at foul music, foul words, Look at the, the eyes. You, you got ear gates. You got mouth gate. You got where there are orifices. Those are gates and entry points into your soul. So whatever you are taking in through these ear gates, they're going directly to your soul. And then you wonder why you stumbling and why you are falling because you are allowing the, allowing the, filth of this world to be entertained within your God-appointed system. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. The word of God is an everlasting. It is powerful. It is a word of health. It's a word of substance. And it's a word of life. If you give your life to God, the nature of who you are as a individual will be changed. To everyone that lays hold to the gospel, there is no way you can hear the gospel, that you can ingest it, digest the gospel, and it not change your life. If it's not changed in your life, it's because you are not listening, you are not ingesting it, you are not allowing it to, uh, to meditate on the word, you're not spending time with God alone in meditation, in prayer, uh, in sackcloth, in ashes, in fasting, in taking yourself away from the filth of this world, uh, 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 and you are indulging in it. Wherever there is an office about your body that filth can enter in, then it will set up and it'll take root. If you do not convince yourself to be obedient to the word of God and to live this word, nobody's perfect. We are not going to be perfect until we make it into glory, until we make it into wherever we are in that great by and by in the new Jerusalem. We're not going to be perfect. But if you work on this thing in daily life and take it in as your daily bread, there is no way in the world you can read this word, study this word word, spend time with God and not walk with him, not embrace his principles. Babylon, what did Israel do? Israel got to Babylon and as time passed, they became Babylonians. They forgot the teachings of their forefathers. And I'm so glad that our pastor often talks about the great pastor Seaborn White and the different things that he taught us and the prophecies that are yet being fulfilled. He used to tell us, fill your cabinet, fill your cabinet. There's something coming. I don't, I can't put my finger on it, but it's coming and you are going to need food and water. And he tell me, make sure the saints are taken care of. Many times it is a need that we have as humans that brings us to God in such a way that our hearts uh, 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 cry out to him and it compels us to go before him. Many of us, many times, we want to uh, not climb the mountain. We want to get around the mountain. Lord, move this mountain. Uh, uh, give me strength to climb. Uh, 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 uh. If he has brought a mountain to you, 
Lord, give me strength to climb it. I don't want it to be moved because there's a lesson in the mountain. And the only way I can become stronger in my faith, oh, thank you, God, and my walk with him is to go over the mountain, to go through the valleys, to go through the deep waters, the only way, because your faith must carry demonstration. In your demonstration, in your own life, you get to testify, to tell somebody else, if you believe, if you listen, oh, tell your friend, tell your neighbor, tell them just listen. Take it in and embrace what God is saying. Look at here. The only way you can become all that God has called you to be. Uh, the woman that touched the hem of Jesus' garment, and he said, virtue, power has gone out of my body because he had been touched by somebody that showed sure enough believe. The disciples were saying, ah, right, get back, don't touch him. But she pressed away. We got to press our way, saints. Through this time that we're living in, we got to press our way. I know some of us are telling us this, and some of them tell us that, and the scientists say, put your mask on, and our rebellious nature from the Garden of Eden, we don't want to put on the mask. We don't want to be obedient to the societal norms at this time that will keep us safe. Oh, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. It's a rebellious and damnable evil. Huh? Rebellion is witchcraft. Rebellion is likened to witchcraft. Disobedience. Disobedience to the word of God. Disobedience to pastors. Disobedience to your leaders. Disobedience to the norms of society when it comes to protecting your families and protecting yourself. Oh, I'm tired of this and I'm tired. I'm tired of that. With folk going home every day, the number is over a million some odd people. I don't believe in my recollection we've had a war where we lost this many people. But I got news for you today. We in a war. This pandemic is a war. And it's taking people out left and right. I'm telling you, disobedience, straight up rebellion and disobedience. But I got good news for you today. Submit yourself to the word of God. Huh? Submit yourself to the word of God. Any of the craziness that's going on, God hates injustice. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently fill him. That, huh? If you diligently seek him, he will answer. He ain't going to answer in the way that you think, but he going to answer because he going to get you to the finish line. It's a yes, Lord, in my spirit. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I feel him. I'm saying yes myself. Faith. Faith brings you into action. A principle within our hearts. That principle has to be embedded in who you are so that Christ can and he will dethrone every power of Satan. Uh-huh. That's what faith does. We operate in the prophetic and we operate uh, uh, in the word of knowledge. It comes by faith. By faith. Huh? I don't know why I know what I know. I just know it. Uh, the God just give it to me. We were ministering last Sunday and God said, tell this one that and tell that one this. All I know is that that's what God said. And I'm crazy enough to do whatever he says. I, I'm submitted to the will of God. God accomplishes everything that he has set out for us to do. One thing we want to be mindful of, if we do not want to be submitted for, to the reason that we are in the earth, then what's the purpose? 
What is the purpose of being in the earth? If you're not going to be obedient to the word of God, then, yeah, because we all have purpose in the earth. Some of us fulfill it and some of us don't because we decide we're not going to fulfill it because we will let this flesh control us and dictate to us. Uh, slap your flesh and say, be still. Uh-huh, you, you sit down. Uh-huh, I'm in control. If you're not in control of your flesh, get in control of your flesh. God has created us to subdue kingdoms, to subdue kingdoms, not just our little space that we occupy, but he has created us to do to subdue kingdoms. However, we miss the mark by not hearing. Huh? The just shall live by faith. We don't listen. I want you to pat yourself on the ear and say, my ears are open, Lord. I'm going, I'm going to hear what you say. The magnificent. And the reason God knows that you heard him is because your behaviors are conducive to what he has called you to be. When we do wrong uh, against what God's principles are, that's because we have decided that we'll allow the flesh to control us and not the spirit. If your spirit is in control, your flesh will be obedient. But if your, your spirit not in control, we watch your behavior and we know it's not uh, in control. So instead, we listen to Satan because that is what has happened. We're not listening to the Holy Spirit, the voice of God, but we're listening to Satan and we allow our soulless issues to take control and be the ruler of who we are. Uh, we're spiritual beings. Tell your neighbor, tell your friend, tell whoever they're with you or just shout it out in the atmosphere. Oh, I'm a spiritual being. Do you not understand that this flesh cannot go into the place that God will call us to, the new Jerusalem, not this nasty, dirty, filthy flesh, uh-uh, in the new Jerusalem. Huh? We wasn't made or created to sit in heaven. We were created for the earth. But since we couldn't do that right, we take on ownership of Adam. We take on ownership of Adam. We were in Adam when he sinned. So we all fell together. So now we all getting it straightened back out together. Now faith, it subdues kingdoms. It works righteousness. It stops the mouths of lions. It gives us the ability to be triumphant under all circumstances. I understand what's happening around the world and what's going on, but my heart and my words say that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Huh? That's what the word faith. Those who believe, you can't come to him unless you believe. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That means that you are looking for ways to be in obedience with God. Huh? You're looking for ways to be obedient. You study your scripture in order that you not fall into error. And just in case you open up one of these ear gates or other orifices and openings and you fall, he is waiting for you to say, I'm sorry, I repent, Lord. And once you repent, he throws it in the sea of forgetfulness, never to look at it again. But it's on you. It's on you. You can't operate in sin and righteousness at the same time. The two do not go together. They cannot occupy the same space. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The mothers used to tell them, holiness or hell? Uh, you can't be holy and profane at the same time. They cannot occupy the same space. Holiness cannot occupy in this body and profanity. One or the other has to be master. If Satan is in control, he is the master. Uh, James said, yo, daddy is the devil. 
one or the other. When holiness and the Holy Spirit is controlled, then God himself, he is the master of your being. Somebody put your hands together for God and say he is. Yeah, he is my master. He's my master. Do you not understand when Satan takes control, his little imps operate in you, then you're saying, yeah, Satan is my daddy. Mm -hmm. That's what you say. You're saying, he is my daddy. The faithful always have a good report. Living in the divine order of victory, the divine order, there's a plan to victory because God has taken his place in you, there's order. There's order. There is ranking in the spirit. There is ranking in the kingdom of God. There is ranking in your army, United States Army. There's ranking. You see them generals and they have all them stars and, and little pads and all that because there's ranking. There is knowledge and understanding that they have in their specific areas where they master it. We got to be the same way in the kingdom of God. We got to be masters of living holy. We got to be masters of feeding the babies. We got to be masters in healing the sick, encouraging the mothers, encouraging our fathers. Huh? We got to be masters. And oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, he download me, download y'all. Uh, just go walk with me. I, I got just a a little bit more, and I'm going to get right on out of your way. The Holy Spirit brings to our minds, thus saith the Lord, every time, every time, it is us in any man that speak. Let him speak as an oracle of God. He's speaking to us. When we bring a word to God's people, let that oracle, that voice, be able to spend time with God, not off of your know-how. Uh, we got a lot of people that got know-how, but they have no relationship with God. Gifts and callings come without repentance. So they have gifting. They have the ability to tingle the flesh and move the flesh. But that is not God. No, it is not. Gifts and callings come by, by way of repentance. But when you repent and you submit your life to God, amen, amen, amen. Let the church say amen. Then we can hear the oracle. We can hear them when they come into our ears. That's is good for the soul. It's feeding for the soul. We won't be like the rebellious uh, 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 Israel with a rebellious self in Babylon. Huh? I remember the prophet Daniel said, look at here, God. You told me 70 years, and I was a kid when I came, and I was captured, and now I am old. He, he's old, but he knows that the righteous, God has never was young, but now I'm old, never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. Look here to all my grandchildren, and my nieces, and my nephews, and, and, and my uncles, and I got a seed in the ground. And it's coming up, it's coming up roses, and it's coming up filled with the Holy Ghost. I see them down the line, carrying the word of God, trying to tell somebody about Jesus and who he is. Look at here, this anointing is passing down. A greater, I pronounce it today, in, in my life, but the anointing is going to be greater in my children, in my children's children's life. Now, I want you to understand, not only in my blood, but I'm talking about my spirit your children. They're going to walk and carry this banner. You hear what I'm saying, church? Come on with me, somebody. Look at here. Got to get out of here. Got to get out of here. My conclusion, faith in God and the power of God, it lives. It lives. His knowledge lives. It lives. It lives. His word is walking life walking life. We are no better than our faith. Point. 
we are no better than our faith. If we have no faith, then we might as well go sit down and, and do popsicles and whatever you want to do. Because it is the word of God, who he is, uh, how to move in his kingdom, how to move in the realms and dimensions of God is wrapped up, is born, is, is tied up in faith. From Genesis to Revelation, it is about faith. You can't please God. You can't please him. You can't please him without no faith. You got to have walking faith. When I get up in the morning, I thank God for this day. Why? This is by faith that he woke me up. I didn't do it on my own, but by faith. We come to him by faith. If you believe in him, you are purified, for he is pure. Uh, he sanctifies us. He purifies us. He strengthens us. He is strong, and he makes us whole. He is God. Now I say to you, for the backslider, this is a good day to come home. Call Zion Worship telephone number. We have persons that will answer that line. If you need prayer to get back in line with God, call that number. Uh, you can hit Facebook. You can hit any of the media sites and you will find Zion Worship Center. Powerful pastors that love God with all their heart and with all their being. Leadership that loves God. God, with everything that they have, intending to make it in and not be lost. And while we're on our way, we're going to bring some souls with us. We're going to tell them about Jesus. And that's what we're doing today. So then, not only that, if you say and you need strengthening, Zion Worship Center, 2131 Pine Street, Wyandotte, Michigan. Hit us up on the media sites. We will take you. I'll take you in right now. That's what I do. I do it right now. Stop everything. Come on, soul. We got to make it into the kingdom. His return is soon. What is soon? Not right now. Not maybe not tomorrow. But he on his way. The signs are present. The signs that Revelation speak to, they are present, they are immediate, and they have been activated. When have you seen a million people leave this earth within 24 months and less, gone into wherever the eternity is for the individual? Huh? Never seen nothing like it in your life. Never seen the types of shootings and, and killings and, and lying and craziness. Huh? His return is in the sign. Ask John. Uh, John said, go ask Jesus. Is he be the one or should I look for another? Jesus didn't go. He said, look at the sign. Have the blind not seen? Have the dead not been raised? Huh? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit uh, that landed in this earth and allowed us to walk during this time, to walk with us. We thank God for it on this day. I bless you now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pronounce that your ears have been opened. The just shall live by faith. In Jesus' name, we pray for you and we'll see you real soon. God bless you.